potentially hazardous gases coming from the floor of this abandoned location was not the encounter we expected when we went inside. As the structure is part of a live chemical facility, we didn't want to get close to the smoke, but it was worth dodging to experience this disused power station. The buildings offered some of the best industrial abandonment we have seen. Having been closed for almost 20 years, there is a fascinating level of decay and rust making it very photogenic. Come with us as we enter a monstrous ruin of industry which is one of the most stunning explores we have done this year. Due to the factories releasing gases and creating noise pollution, they are away from residential life, isolated in a flat landscape. This meant that the power station security team had a good perspective of any explorer incoming to seek an entry point, so we formed a swift plan in order to get close enough to the structure undetected. Thick smoke rising from the ground wasn't something we wanted to see, but we stayed away from it and headed into the alleyway between the two huge abandoned properties. It was an unnerving experience as there was a lot of building equipment and vehicles dotted around and we had to go past them all in order to get inside. The reason for them being here was that the power station is undergoing a lengthy demolition process as it is warranting transformation into a new sustainable energy centre. We entered in the underbelly of the maze of a building so we headed upstairs to where we believed we would be more concealed. Needing to find a room to set up our gear, we entered one cloaked in darkness, which worked out quite nicely as this was the power station's central control room. It is sad that during the site's period of dereliction, vandalism has been spoiled over the control panel and a lot of the equipment has been stolen. However, there was some interesting paperwork and machinery left to see, like the microphone where information would be passed on to the workers throughout the buildings. It was then time to continue the exploration and head into a rusting metal paradise. Have you noticed that background hum of machinery? That was a 5 minute audio clip we recorded of the noise coming from active buildings nearby. Although they are many meters away, the echo of power emanates through this shadow of their former glory. Over the years it appeared that there had been many collapses from the roof that dropped down causing mass damage in the walkways and machinery inside so we had to be very careful when we moved around. All the floors above ground level were grids meaning we could see all that was beneath us whatever the height. 
There are also as many caution tapes that have been ripped apart. This means that during the site's active age they were worried that certain parts of it were unsafe. Now it's been closed for almost two decades. This made us paranoid of a dislodged grate or anything that could be dangerous. They've obviously put grid here and there, which is grey. Compared to the other rusted ones, I'm pretty sure that would be a newer one. So even when this place was active, they've been refitting these grids, probably because they're unsafe. We could even see where the building's demolition had begun as there was a small pile of rubble. In one room we found many old bits and pieces in the storage space. They were all listed under different measurements so we can guess that they were spare parts in case anything broke in the facility. Boxes and boxes of small screws all still remained, emphasising the structure's appearance being almost frozen in time. Although the towering machinery and floors may seem confusing, the main function of this building was to incinerate the coal to create steam. The coal would be transported into the power station via conveyor belts that go all the way to the top floor. Here, at the highest point, were a few boilers which would burn the coal to make the steam, which flows into turbines and the process continues. We hope to visit the impressive turbines later in the exploration. Internal building work was noticeable with a lot of scaffolding inside, perhaps to keep the building standing as well. Asbestos was being removed from the structure through these pipes. The contaminated room was enclosed in a blue tent whilst the hazard was taken out carefully. In our time exploring we have only ventured inside two derelict power stations, the other being on our Scotland trip last summer. When we visited that one we thought it was gigantic, but this one was even bigger. We began to appreciate the incredible craft that goes into fitting all the machinery required into such a small area, as the building was ready to burst due to how crammed it was. Furthermore, at this stage we could see the functioning facility in full, the towering structure enclosing the ruined one in shadow. The site had been running already for many years, but in the late 1920s it was sold to a new company, who altered the property to produce a much more effective amount of power a day. One reason was the building of this power station. As well as creating power for the chemical facility, the coal-fired structure allowed the local area to have power for over 70 years. However, when a new power plant was built in the early 21st century, this one was decommissioned and has been abandoned since. We were ready to move on to the other building after being inside this one for a very long time. To access it we needed to cross the alleyway between quickly as we were in full sight of the active areas. As soon as we got inside the hissing of steam filled the air and we stumbled around to get past it. It smelt very bad and we didn't want to be anywhere near it during the rest of this exploration. Nevertheless, we were happy that we had gained entry to this side of the power station, as we believe this is where the turbine hall laid. This large control panel sat directly under the staircase upwards into what looked like a gigantic room. Without hesitation we headed up with great excitement.
two large turbines are in the massive hall, both in a sorry state with much natural decay on them. We know from old pictures that the turbines were originally white, expressing the progress of the moss on them, giving them a green colour. These bulky machines would have spun the steam in their internal generators to create electricity. Once this has been done, the steam was cooled and sent back to the boilers to restart the process. An array of meters were needed to assess everything possible to do with the turbines because the nearby population was relying on them to provide power 24-7, therefore there was many to be seen. In full shot you can see how grand the turbine hall is, a huge window brightening the dark ruin from one end. There was also the remains of a gantry crane that would move up and down the turbine hall in order to fix or adjust any issues that went on efficiently. This one could hold over 20 tonnes. A smaller control room housed the panels for the turbines, but its blue decor was fading away. We could see more signs of building work in this building too. The most noticeable was the blue tent we could see before through the walkway, where asbestos removal was ongoing. With the demolition visible outside, it is likely that the workers are making the structure safe before they demolish it and build a new site. The asbestos could linger if not done correctly. We began to climb the tower with hopes of getting onto the roof. Soon enough we found an open door. The views were great, as the setting sun was casting great light onto the industrial complex. Up here we could also see the conveyor belt where the process begins and coal is brought to the boilers. We could also see the complete power station which is quite an intimidating building, more so in the past when smoke would have billowed from it. At this stage we were very content with what we had seen and we were ready to make our way down, heading out silently. Although this power station was never built to be architecturally stunning, especially in an abandoned state, the desolate facility still gives off an impressive vibe and we will be sad to see it demolished. Turbines were revelations at the time when this site was functioning, so it shows humanity's progression when we are getting rid of something so efficient to build something that will be even more efficient in its place. Nevertheless, we were very happy to have been able to explore this site before its time comes to an end, and we hope you enjoyed coming along with us.